engineer and instructor at Terrapin. And joining me is the wonderful Betty Nelson. Hey, Joe. Thanks. Yes, we're excited to have you guys with us today. And we hope these tips and tricks make your life easier because I think some of them are pretty great. They are. I have to admit, it did take quite a bit of back and forth to kind of funnel down <laughs> all of these little great tips and tricks. Uh, there were a lot of really good ones, and we had to just kind of sift it down to what we could fit into 30 minutes. So we hope you yep. enjoy what we prepared. We'll save the ones that didn't make it in this list for another webinar another yeah. time, and we'll share those with you. Cool. So let's go ahead and off. I'm going to turn off my ugly mug here so you can concentrate <laughs> on the presentation. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and get started with awesome. uh, what we have to show you here. So this is a, a big whirlwind. So let's uh, let's get going. Now, Betty, you have a, you found a really good one here dealing with yeah, Gmail. No, uh, this is your tip. And I had never thought about this in my life, but I do love to stay organized in my personal email because it can, I have literally gotten new email addresses because I didn't want to clean up the inbox of an old email address. So why don't you explain this one? It, it took me a little time to wrap my head around it. Yeah, so this is good. So it, whenever you have, you know, you have email accounts and you're like, well, I'll create another email account because I want to sign up for stuff, but I don't want to use my real email account because I know that at some point I'm going to get bombarded with, you know, spam, marketing, uh, yada, yada, yada. So we'd always kind of thought, well, man, it would be really nice if I could create a specialized email address for specific things without having to create a new email account. And lo and behold, uh, there is a feature that you can use in Gmail to do that. So essentially, uh, within the Gmail settings, you can go and create an alias. And all you do is you append a plus sign uh, with any combinations or words or numbers after your email address. So for example, uh, if your email address was uh, Joe at gmail.com, you could create an alias called Joe plus sign friends at gmail.com or Joe plus sign lands in at gmail.com or whatever. All those aliases would point back to your main uh, Gmail account, but the email address that's being used and that the marketers or the other subscriptions know about is the alias that you created. All it, all it required is just adding a plus sign and what you want to call it. So it was really cool. And it's it's nice too, because if you do ever get on any marketing lists and you're like, hmm, how did my email address get on this list? <laughs> well, if you use an alias and you put the specific company or list you signed up for, and then it comes back and you're getting stuff for, you know, uh, all of a sudden I'm getting all this AARP spam mail. Why is that coming through? You know, those are other issues that come when I get the magazine as well. But here, now you'll know, oh, it came from this website because here's the email address. They must have sold my information. So it's a, it's kind of a way to keep track on it, also to kind of uh, you know where things go and not have to give out your real email address if you don't want to. Really um, nice uh, little tip. It is. And I um, so you guys don't have to take copious notes. I just want to tell you right away, most of our tips have a link in them um, or in our information we have a link to how to figure out how to do that where to get more information and we're going to upload this presentation to our youtube channel we'll talk more about that at the end but we are also this time going to add all the links that we're talking about in the description for this video on youtube so you don't have to write things down Yes, thank you for that reminder, Betty. It makes it easy for everybody to find what we're talking about. Exactly. So here's another one. Yes, this one is called Mile IQ. And, um, and you may be hearing my washing machine on the spin cycle, or you may not, because I am using noise canceling uh, ear ear air pods. You can tell I'm over 50 because I still am not quite sure what to call those. But anyway, we're going to talk about noise canceling in a minute. But this time we're talking about keeping track of mileage. And I know we just spent a year where we weren't driving around much for work, but, you know, it seems like that's changing a little bit. So I used to keep track of work-related mileage in a little notebook in my car. Some people use Excel. 
but that is like yesterday's news. So now you can use Mile IQ, which is a part of Microsoft 365. You can also set up a free account, and this will track your mileage automatically from your smartphone using the built-in GPS. All you need to do is swipe left for personal or right for business. And Terrapin uses this to keep track of our time and produce monthly, quarterly, and annual reports on both personal and business mileage. It's pretty great. Great tool. It is mm -hmm. really great time saver tool. Uh, here's another one uh, that is a little uh, known fact with the Microsoft uh, accounts. Uh, it has a free version of it, or if you have an M365 account, it's included. But essentially, it is a whole litany of different things to help you keep track of lists. So rather than keeping things on Post-it notes or in a notes program, keeping it in within the Microsoft lists allows you to, for it to interact with Microsoft 365. You can combine them into doing calculations with Excel. You can combine it into doing something with Microsoft Access and keeping the data in a database. Uh, or you can just add it into a to-do to follow up and do something later on at a certain date and time, a uh, particular recurring interval with the reminders. It's very, very nice, interactive. Uh, if you have a Android or an iPhone, there is a specific app called To Do that will list them for you, uh, which also will interact with your email. So when you flag things for follow-up, it also will show up in your To Do list as items to check off and do. And of course, as you check them off, it will unflag them in your email. So it kind of is one upon the other. Very, very it. nice easily keep track of things and integrates with everything Microsoft, which is, you know, one of the big benefits of using the M365. Yeah, no, I think this is really cool. And I have to applaud Microsoft 365 that they keep rolling out cool new features that are incredibly useful. And that's one of them. So now we're going to just as a quick one, um, we saw in the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of people trying to conduct Zoom meetings with their firm logo appearing in the background only to be frustrated when they opened it up and it was backwards. So here is the trick for that. Add your logo to a background in PowerPoint and then flip the image so you can mirror view in Zoom and the participants can see your branding. It's awesome. So I, I put it reverse here on purpose to show my point. And Joe, what act, you know, is it complicated once you get into Zoom to make that your background? No, it's not complicated at all. You know, once you're in Zoom, uh, you have your virtual backgrounds option off of the main properties and you go there and you'll be a plus sign where you can add the image that you created. And once you've, once you've added it in, it'll stay part of Zoom. So you can always choose when you want to use it. And once it's there, you select it and say apply, and voila, you have your background, and it'll have your logo so that people can read it. And that's the whole point, <laughs> and being uh, able to see it rather than in reverse. Yes. And the other point I wanted to mention is that I'm sure people are saying, well, it's in PowerPoint. How is it going to become a picture? Any slide or every slide, you can save as a image. You can save it as an image instead of PowerPoint. So those are really simple options right within the program. You can even right click on the slide that you've done this on and say save as an image and save it into a folder. And just like Joe said, once you upload it into your Zoom platform, it will be there anytime you need to use it. Look at that. Boom. See? Betty just added another tip to your list right there. It wasn't even included in our script. That was oh, well, fantastic. I love I it. I do that all the time. Like all of my marketing work, the majority of it, I do in PowerPoint and then save as images because I know the program so well, I don't want to learn a new program to create uh, graphics. So that's just what I do. Maybe I shouldn't have told everyone. <laughs> so, <laughs> so speaking of graphics, uh, th there's a few more things that we can do. Uh, this is a, a program that I came across. Uh, I had attended a webinar and the presenter was switching their video so that the, the object that they were talking about was behind them and their video was in the corner. Now, it's not like 
or in Zoom where you have someone sharing their screen and you see all the videos to the left or to the right or at the top. No, they were actually part of the actual video stream. And I was like, well, that's really cool because it almost looked as if, you know, when you go into the news and you'll see that uh, the anchor is there and then you'll see the, the little window and it'll have what they're talking about. That's what it had. And I'm like, how are they doing that? Well, the, this is the program they're using, Minicam, M-A-N-Y-C-A-M. Now, there are other programs that will do this, uh, but I found this one really, really dead simple to use. And there is a free version of it and then a paid version. Of course, the paid version gives you more options. But essentially, it allows you to control or layer videos, pictures, live camera feeds, any way you want into a feed that everyone is going to see. Really great way to enhance uh, your live video uh, on streaming platforms like what we're using, uh, whether it's on Zoom or Click Meeting like we're using for this, Microsoft Teams or etc. cetera. Uh, having multiple cameras, which is really good if you are needing to present for an event. Uh, being able to have mobile and PowerPoint, use virtual backgrounds to display things or annotate things including uh, green screens, lots of lots of options to really take your your streaming to the next level. Uh, so I, great I think this option. Sounds, yeah, I think this sounds great because, you know, in the beginning of the pandemic, it was all about still communicating with clients while we can't meet in person. I think that's going to continue for a long time, at least yeah. big meetings. So this is a great way to just kind of up the ante and have a more sophisticated approach. And I don't know anyone who's using it except Joe stumbled on it. And I just think many of our clients, if they have someone in their firm that has the time to wrap their head around it, will really use this and think it's great for presentations. Essentially, it's just sort of like your prosumer uh, video uh, editing, or not really video editing, video switching program mm -hmm. is what you would call it. Because you can cut in and out. You can transfer back and forth between video feeds, uh, just like um, news broadcast, how they would do it. Awesome. Now, we were talking about uh, PowerPoint before, so this was Betty's little tip, another little PowerPoint tip that was fantastic. It's a super simple one, but, you know, I work in PowerPoint a lot, and there are certainly times when I get to the point where my slide is absolutely not what I want, and I just want to start over. So instead of actually having to start a new slide and delete it, you can find this little button called reset and it does just that it resets the slide it's like a the magic eraser in word um, it scrubs the slide clean and you're back to a blank slide with the appropriate layout so this is a time saver for sure really nice it, again a quick shortcut so you're not having to do the control a and delete or yada 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 on that so Really, really nice. Awesome. Okay. Now here's a fun one for all of you guys. Oh Have you ever gosh. been in a Zoom meeting or it, they call it, the program is called, or I should say it's a website called Zoom Escaper. But if you've ever been in a meeting and you're like, man, I wish I had someone to get out of this or, you know, maybe <laughs> if my connection sounded so bad, everybody would be like, should we reschedule this? And you're like, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, there are, there, it's a, it's a fantastic little a uh, fun program, uh, you know, if you, not that I would encourage you to play little practical jokes, but you could always throw in things like the echo or the bad connection. This is what the <laughs> website looks like. Uh, you know, a man weeping in the background, which is quite hilarious to hear that. Uh, you know, construction, uh, these are all ones I threw on and I tried, it was, it was, it was very funny. The one for the bad connection uh, was like irritating my soul. I couldn't wait to turn, turn it off because the, the sound would cut in and out. Uh, it was, yeah. Anyway, okay. have some fun with that. Uh, if you do use this, uh, don't tell them you got it for us. Just, you know, own it Especially and have fun Especially if it. you're using the one in the bottom right corner. <laughs> Please don't, I don't tell gonna them mention it's it. our fault. Right. You got it. I thought it would oh. be better if they had one of a flushing toilet. That would have been Exactly. Better, but, uh, oh my gosh. Anyway. Crazy. So, Five months. Maybe, or maybe that. even one that puts on a cat filter. We could throw that one on there as well. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I call That's that one 511. Too much information. <laughs> there you uh, go. Crazy. Okay, here's one about transcription, which, you know, again, is very popular. Lots of times you'll receive a text message from someone who has an iPhone. It'll, it will say, you know, sent by Siri, 
Um, people are trying to save keystrokes, save their wrists, <laughs> stop corporal tunnel syndrome. Dictation is a great option. And, you know, you can pay a lot of money for ways to dictate and transcribe or, you know, use Siri. And now Microsoft Office has a lot of built-in features you can use. But otter.ai transcription service in real time is very cool. You can, there is a new feature. So you could plan to attend a webinar or a Zoom meeting and not be able to attend. You can allow your Otter Assistant to attend the webinar and it will transcribe the entire event for you. So that is just very cool. Now, this is the dictate feature I was talking about in Word. So if it's not visible, you know, just fiddle around with your toolbars till you see it. And if you're using a computer that has a microphone, um, you're good to go. You can dictate. And it's so much yeah, better than it used to be. So much more It really accurate. is. It yeah. really is. Uh, just a, a note on that on the microphone, which is important. Our notebook users won't have any problem with this. But if you have a desktop computer, most desktop computers don't come with a microphone. So... Uh, you might have to add one, or sometimes if you add a headset that has a microphone, you would uh, you would be good in in that regard. Yeah, that works great. Yeah. Now, speaking of microphones, uh, this <laughs> is a great little tool that I came across. It's a service. Uh, you install it. There is a free version of it that gives you uh, so many minutes free per week, uh, or you can actually purchase it per month. It's uh, I, I want to say it's you know it's less than five dollars a month. But it's really, really cool. I'm using it right now. What it does, it's noise cancellation. But instead of for your headset, for what you're listening to, it's noise cancellation for your microphone. So I tested this out when I first got it. I had my boys come in the room and have an argument in the back, which isn't really hard to do. I had the dogs <laughs> barking. Um, I had someone making noise crumpling paper. Uh, I had the TV on in the background. And once I turned on this feature, all of that disappeared and all you heard was my voice. It was weird and incredible all at the same time. So I have a little sound clip for you to give you an example of what I'm talking about. So at, at first, you're going to hear somebody talking and you're going to hear a baby crying. And then about halfway through, you're going to we're going to turn on the noise cancellation and the baby crying is going to disappear as soon as it turns on. So take a listen to this. I was informed only yesterday that we should participate in a conference that's coming up next month. I've already shared my screen with you so you can see all the requirements in this document. Let's give credit. So that's pretty incredible. And I honestly, I didn't really believe it until I actually had my boys come in and did recording to, to show what this was like. And I was pretty impressed. So you name it, uh, you know, truck, you know, I, a lot of times doorbell rings, my, my dog starts barking. I can hardly control that. Uh, you know, the mail truck, she happens to hear the mail truck is going to start barking. The wind will blow and the grass will move. She will start barking. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't hear it anymore. It's fantastic. Nice. So in the age of using, you know, the webinars and things of that nature has really, really turned out to be a great tool to help eliminate distractions from my location. That's great. Now, here's a really cool one Betty found. I love this one. Well, what's so frustrating to me is I used to go to websites to do this. And I had no idea this was right on my Windows desktop. So you might have to search for it. What you're searching for is just the calculator that comes with Windows. I pinned mine to the taskbar, and now I use it often. But instead of just using it as a standard calculator, if you bars, sort of like an ellipsis, you can see one of your options and look at all the options. Fit graph and programmer date calculation, which is. So there are different. To see the difference between dates, add or subtract days and go ahead and make that calculation. So it has a little, as you can see, calendar icon that you can click on to pick the date. And it's just been really fun to use. And I, I just love that it's right there and you don't have to search for it. 
Super easy. A little known feature right there in Microsoft Windows. Mm -hmm. uh, here's here's another one that we like to use. Uh, and you can even use this for our presentations on YouTube <laughs> from our channel. But Please you don't. Can speed up. I know. <laughs> it sounds really funny. It's like the chipmunk. You've got to try it. <laughs> uh, you're, you can speed up or slow down the YouTube videos. Uh, so you, yeah, either way, if you want to speed them up, slow down, I've used them both ways. I've used them to speed up presentations that were going a little slow. This, the, the playback speed and slowing down I've actually used for when I was helping to learn other languages and there were YouTube, uh, wow. uh, trainings and they're pronouncing words. I'm like, man, I wish they would slow that down just a little bit. You can do it. You can slow wow. it down just a notch and you can catch every pronunciation. So that way you can cut, catch all the nuances of, of that language. There's lots of ways you could use that. But little known fact, a lot of people yeah, didn't all, know that you had the ability to do that. I didn't. And all you have to do is click on the little settings gear wheel right there at the bottom of your YouTube screen. And voila, you got it going on. Yeah. And there it is. Now, here is a really cool one. Uh, Betty and I both love these little tools right here. Yes. I want to explain this because the slide's coming. It's making you wait because it's that good. Um, I know a lot of us use iPhones. We may have to use Windows computers in the office, but a lot of us prefer Apple products at home. I have a, that's what I work on. <laughs> Joe, do you think it's ever going to come? <laughs> or let's see. Come there on, it it's I not that it. exciting. Can you? Well, I can't. So hopefully it'll come soon. Um, so anyway, what I'm talking about, a couple different things. First of all, if you have multiple Apple products, there is a universal clipboard. I'm like, huh? I don't even get what you mean. Well, once I figured it out, I was in love. So I can say if I am on a website on my Mac, there we go. If I'm on a website on my Mac and I need a password that I've only saved on my iPhone, I can go to my iPhone, find my password, copy it, and within a short period of time, all I have to do is go back to my Mac and hit paste, and it will paste what I just copied from my iPhone or my iPad and vice versa. It goes both yep. ways. That was cool enough, but then I realized a lot of people don't know about handoff or app switcher for that matter. So this is the one that I think is even more exciting. Now, I certainly have been with my MacBook Pro sitting right in front of me and I go to a website on my iPad or my iPhone and sure enough, like in that first graphic with the blue arrow, I see that it tells me I'm doing something somewhere else. Well, here's what you could do. You could start the email on your iPhone, and then once this appears in your dock on your Mac, you can click on it and finish the email on your Mac. You can also do that with, uh, let's say, you find a recipe on your iPhone, and now you want to have it on your iPad, which sits on a stand in your kitchen so you can cook. The same thing, but it's a little different when you're going from mobile devices. So everything I read talked about the app switcher. And I'm thinking, I've been using an Apple iPhone since it came out. And how do I not know what, what the app switcher is? Well, the app switcher I use for something else. So when I want to kill all my apps or find a certain app, you know, you swipe up from your lock screen or even if you're on your phone and it's unlocked, you swipe up from the very bottom you don't swipe to the top, but you swipe just far enough up that all your open apps show up as these little individual pages. If you wanna kill the app, like if your phone's having issues, you can't get a song to stop playing, you just keep swiping them up and you can close all your apps, which will also save your battery if you're going into a situation where you notice your battery's low and you wanna preserve it, close all your apps by using the app switcher which is just the function of doing this. But notice the second blue arrow. This is how a handoff works from your Mac to your mobile device. You have to do this in order to see it. It's there, but you won't see it until you do this. So once I get the app switcher going, 
like it shows with all those little screens showing separately, then I go back to my Mac and click on the item I want to hand off. And within a second, it shows up at the bottom of the app switcher where I'm showing you with the arrow. And once you click on it, it will appear on the device you're handing off to. So again, I, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm a total geek. I love doing it with recipes because it's like, oh wait, you know, I wanna now go into the kitchen and use my bigger device so I can read it more carefully. So it's just awesome. Um, you can do it for a lot of things. So again, we'll have links so you can better wrap your head around all that stuff, but it's very cool. Yeah, really, really nice. Again, one of those little known things that's been there, but just never taken advantage of. Cause I just, that's right. I, I never knew. No one, no one ever showed me or I never <laughs> went uh, and read through the entire technical article. On it. <laughs> Let's well, be honest. It, it doesn't help that when you get an Apple device, they literally give you a little accordion piece of paper that just says basic stuff. So yeah, you have, to have right. free, time, free time to learn it. And who has free time? Not me. That's true. So here's another one. This one is for Windows, and it's actually been around for a little while, and it's gotten better uh, through the years. But most people don't know that with the Windows clipboard, it's not a one-to-one -one copy and paste. We've always used it that way, and it will work that way. But Windows, uh, Windows 10, and especially with working with Microsoft Office, will allow you to be able to copy up to 24 things in succession and then you can go back and look at the clipboard and choose what you want to paste. You can pick and choose. Right. Now, we did confirm that if you uh, once you copy the 25th thing, it will bump out the oldest one for whatever's in that list. So it only does up to 24. Right. It's not unlimited. But this is a huge time saver. I mean, uh, Betty, you had mentioned that you had used this and how incredibly useful it was in saving you time. It was when I had to, um, I know a big challenge for anybody working in litigation is you get your, you receive interrogatories in the mail, uh, say special interrogatories. There could be a hundred of them. Now you need to create your responsive document, your answers to interrogatories. So I use this all the time for that scenario. You scan the document, whatever you can do to get the text on the screen. And then I just use this 24 item clipboard to copy, for example, the interrogatory questions. Then I go to my nice document, my template that has the, you know, all the settings and headings set up where it says special interrogatory 101, response to special interrogatory 101. So I don't wanna retype the interrogatory questions. I use this feature and I can go in and paste then delete. So what you can't see here is there is sort of like a hidden drop down arrow next to each of the items I have copied that will allow you to paste it or delete it. Um, and that's how I use it. And I go through and delete them, you know, as I go. And then I, I never lose track. I can take a phone call. I can step away and make copies. I know right where I'm at because I've already deleted the ones I've pasted. It just is a wonderful time saver. It, and it is. I wanted it is. And I wanted to show under options one of these functions is turned off by default, and I don't want it to be. And that is the one collect without showing the office clipboard. So it, once you put a check in that box, you can start collecting and you will always have the last 24 things you've copied in that list once you have your clipboard visible. So it's really, exactly. really fun. Yep, it's awesome. Really, really nice. And it saves a lot of keystrokes. We we kind of joked <clears throat> when we were talking about saving keystrokes like this and how the computer will always allow us to do what it's always done or how it how it all began. Uh, and we always kind of joked that, hey, uh, if you do use it the old school way, it's okay. But don't be surprised if the 1980s call and ask that <laughs> DOS wants all their keystrokes back. <laughs> oh, the, yeah. So, there's really no reason anymore to be typing everything out from scratch. I mean, we didn't include it in this presentation, but, you know, if you're in Microsoft Word or even Outlook, there's so many things that you either type or need to do that you can turn into saved quick parts or saved um, in Outlook. It's called something else where you literally can create these icons and once you click on it, it's already pre-addressed. It's sort of like a template. So if you have to do something every week, like send an out list to maybe all the supervisors, 
you can save those and just have them all ready to go. So we'll do another presentation with um, more. We actually had more ideas than time. So we'll do another presentation and add those items in to it. But today we covered 14 things that are tips that we hope you like. Again, we'll have the links to information about each of these items on YouTube. Joe, what do you have to share? Yeah. We'll so we'll have all those things out there so you can uh, you can take advantage of them, but at the same time, uh, many of these tips and tricks we got from you. So if you discovered something that rocked your computing power, uh, please share it with us. We want to know, and we'd love to talk about it, discuss it, and give you credit for it. Uh, we'd That's love right. to hear from you. Uh, as always, we appreciate you sharing your time with us and uh, being able to uh, spend time together. Uh, we look forward to our presentation next month, uh, which is going to be talking about the top 10 most critical technology topics for lawyers. What and are I, those? Stay well, tuned. I don't know. What are those? <laughs> what are those? No, oh, let I me tell say, you next month. Well, I wanted to say one more thing because we kind of left it out. To see our videos on YouTube, just go to YouTube and search, type in Terrapin Technology Group. You will see our icon. And just to the right is a red button that says subscribe. Once you do that, you can go to your subscriptions on the left column. And we will always add our presentations, usually the same day that we give them. And there, if you missed one, you can go back and see it. Or in this situation, we'll have all these helpful links in the description. Absolutely. And feel free to like, the, uh, check the like button for the ones you like the most. That helps us to know uh, how to gear our next presentation and what topics you really enjoy. Awesome. So again, thank you very much for your time, Betty. Thank you for your, all of your tips and tricks you shared with us. And we look forward to talking to you next month. Bye everyone. Thank you.